Good evening folks, 21st Century Caveman here. Hope everybody's safe, hope everybody's well and welcome to another episode in the series How to Make a Very Strong Cheap Fence Using Decking Boards. So as you can see the concrete posts have been set and the timber uprights have been fitted securely to them. The timber uprights do actually form part of the fence panels which we'll be making ourselves. The timber uprights are also made of C16 construction grade timber for strength and longevity and they've been treated with two coats of an appropriate stain. So today we're going to start working on the decking boards and we've just measured up the spaces between the posts in order that we can cut the decking boards to size. Now we're also going to stain the decking boards before we fit them into place so we don't splash a concrete post during the process. So these decking boards are a really nice quality. They're 28 millimeters thick and 120 millimeters wide. And we decided on 3.6 meter lengths to reduce the amount of wastage once they've been cut down to size. Now we obtained these from a local builders merchant at a great price and delivery was free of charge. So I was very happy indeed with the purchase. So first order of the day then is to cut these to size in the most economical manner. And to do this I'll be using my invaluable Evolution Circular Saw which I'd highly recommend to anybody. So here I'm using a 12 inch speed square which I purchased from Amazon and I'm using this to mark the boards where I'm going to cut them down and also to use it as a guide for the circular saw to ensure a nice square cut. Now I do prefer this 12 inch one, um, 12 inches incident is about 300 millimeters and I do prefer this when using it as a guide for the circular saw because it's easier to handle. However, I do also have a smaller 7 inch version of the speed square which is also a superb tool but I find that because it's a little bit smaller when I'm actually using the circular saw to cut down timber sometimes my hand gets a little bit trapped underneath the saw. I therefore prefer to use the 12 inch. Now another thing I'll mention is the fact that you'll probably notice that every piece of timber I'm cutting here is clamped securely to the workbench. And yes, I know it's slow and it takes more time, etc. And it's obviously more faffing around. However, I like having both of my hands and all 10 fingers and I want to stay that way. So I always clamp everything to the workbench when using a tool like this. You'll also note that when we're cutting down timber, we're also wearing appropriate PPE comprising of eye protection, ear defenders and mainly gloves. So here then we're working out how many boards we need to make up a panel and we've done some calculations and we're trying to work out how many boards and the spacing it gives us. So we've just done this marking stick basically and just to sort of like mark out the board. So the boards are 120 millimetre wide. We've got 1600 millimetre um, post here. So if we were to put in 12 lengths, it would give us a 10 millimetre gap, which might be a bit close really. So if we, we're just gonna do a quick calculation, work out what sort of gap it would leave us if we put 11 in, which I think is probably going to be a little bit better if I'm honest with you. So yeah, I think 11, perhaps 11 planks, or 11 boards rather, and a slightly bigger gap. 
So we eventually decided to clamp the boards to the post because it enabled us to better visualise what the fence pad looked like with different sorts of spacing. And we decided on a 20mm spacing between the boards. So this was my son's first time using a circular saw and I must say that um, I was actually quite anxious about this because these circular saws, you know, they are potentially very dangerous tools indeed and caution is absolutely everything. So obviously I was very nervous, but clearly, you know, my son's got to start somewhere and practice and experience is absolutely everything. So as far as we were concerned, nice and slowly does it. So here we're setting up to do the staining of the boards and we're using some screw fix, no nonsense, decking stain. This is ash colour, in other words it's a black colour. Before we actually do any staining we're obviously brushing down the boards to get rid of any um, sawdust, that sort of stuff. And I must say that one of the reasons I like using this stain is because it does dry very quickly indeed. It's got a matte finish so it's not shiny and it's just um, also very economical to buy. They cost about 10 quid for two and a half litres. I've used this several times in the past and I've got no problems at all with them. And it is a very nice, easy product to use. Now these brushes we're using, they're about five inches or 125 millimetres. And I bought these about three or four years ago actually when a local branch of our B&Q was closing down. They were actually um, on clearance for about a quid each and I bought about 10 or 11 of these. Basically, you know, whatever was in the box that was left, I purchased them and just snapped them up. <laughs> so here you can see we're doing both sides. This stuff dries very quickly as I say and it doesn't really take too long just to stain these but you need to leave about four rounds between each coat in order to make sure that it stays put. So as you can see that we're making a bit of progress, we've set out all of the timbers, but there is quite a bit of work to do. So obviously we're cracking on while the weather is good because on the days in question, we had a couple of warm days and then there were intermittent showers, that sort of stuff. So basically we just took the opportunity as it arose. Right, so there's only so much you can show of how to stain a decking board before it becomes very tedious and very boring indeed. So I'm going to sign out now and in the next video we'll actually be fixing the boards to the uprights so these panels will start to look like a proper fence. Anyway, I do appreciate you joining me. I hope you've um, found it interesting. I hope you're learning something along the way and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.